Hello, PodFam, and hello, Rachel. How are you today? I'm okay. Good. I'm okay. Good. I have I have some bones to pick, but uh, overall, it's been a good couple weeks. How are you? I'm doing pretty good as well. Mm-hmm. I kind of have a funny story of what I've been watching Great. lately. So I think it's it's a it's a TV show on the History Channel, but I've just ah. been watching like the top five stuff you know on on youtube and mm-hmm. the show is called forged in fire and All right. so it's like this oh gosh how do i explain this um it's a competition and i i don't know how okay. many contestants they starve because i always seem to watch like the th- the finale part where it's down to two mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. they're um like metal workers and they create realistic historical weapons. That's cool. Yeah. So like swords and spears and like war hammers and all, like any type of blade, they do it on this show. And I don't know why I started watching it. I think I just saw it on YouTube and I was just like, oh, my boyfriend, he like, he, he'd enjoy that. We'll just throw it on and then whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. So that was like a week ago. <laughs> Are you obsessed now? Every night I've been <laughs> watching and it's just like, I don't know why I love I, I don't I think I appreciate people in their element of craftsman mm-hmm. craftsmanship, you know, like yep. such an appreciation for people who love doing what they're doing and they're good at it. Um mm-hmm. so I've been watching this show and it's so freaking manly cuz after they um <laughs> build their their sword, you know, for example, they have to pass three tests to see if the oh. the blade can withstand it, it can stay sharp, you know, <laughs> all this stuff. Um, interesting and you're kind of listening to the the two contestants because they're it's their weapons that are being tested and you just hear them like sick yeah that was awesome and <laughs> i turned to my boyfriend i'm just like this is just such a man show and he's like laura you're the one who keeps watching it and you're also the one being like sick, that was awesome <laughs> so <laughs> he's probably like can we what i know he's just like why are you watching this but we get really (laughs) into it as well um because there's this one host his name's doug and i think he's like i don't know like uh, he's like a weapon expert and a martial arts expert and he does the like will it kill test so he's like you know working the sword and testing it all out and then like what the contestants want to hear is just like it will kill (laughs) and he has like a way of saying it and oh my god (laughs) We just get so into it. And then when the blade like breaks, we're like, oh my God, what's he going to do? Because they're like almost out of the competition. If the competitor's sword doesn't break, like they automatically win. It's very intense. So. Oh my. If anyone's looking wow. for a show to just throw on and like unexpectedly get really involved in, Forged in Fire is excellent. This is now your version of the Kardashians. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. I don't know why it's so entertaining, but like, I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, I love it. What are you drinking that tonight? Sounds really fun. I have a peppermint tea. Nice, classic. It's great. It's great, but uh, we don't have air conditioning in our apartment, and it's thirty degrees. Ugh. Um, so I'm sipping it very slowly because I'm very overheated. But what are you having? I am drinking cinnamon bun rooibos. Nice. Yeah, I haven't had it for a nice. while, so I thought I'd better bring it out, and uh, it's delicious as always. Love that. Well, can I rant for a second? Sure. You know, we did our Managing Unrealistic Expectations episode a few weeks ago, and um, I had my doctor's appointment today oh, excellent. that I mentioned, and um, let me tell you, the low expectations that I went into it with were fully met. Good. It was great. Good. Were they low enough now? Yes. Yes. I was 100% prepared for what I was going to hear. And you want to know what that was? What was that? So I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit. But essentially it was, oh, that's weird. But, you know, women's bodies react to those birth control methods, you know, differently. So, you know, I wouldn't say it's not normal. It's normal because it's what your body is choosing to do in reaction to it. And I was just like, what? What do you mean? And she's like, yeah, like we we're, none of we don't get worried about it unless it's like distressing, but we don't get worried about it otherwise. And I'm like, um, it's pretty, it's pretty distressing. Yeah, it's just like I haven't stopped like, bleeding. Um, I'm a little bit yeah. in distress. <laughs> I'm a little bit distressed. And um, I'm sure that there's a lot of other symptoms that people have with these things that they are also very distressed about. So I think it was just a, 
you know, I did get a referral to go to a gynecologist, which is great because that's really the only reason I went in. I kind of knew that the experience was going to be that like, we don't actually think anything's wrong with you uh, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I was prepared. I was prepared for that. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's been on my mind lately and I wish more effort was put into continuing to make these methods of birth control just easier on women. Yeah. Like, it shouldn't just be, oh, yeah, well, that could be a symptom of it. So that's normal. It doesn't mean it's not working. And I'm like, I don't care. I, I'm aware that it's working. That's great. But like, you know, does it have to be a trade off of, oh, it's working uh, in this realm, but it is hell on earth living with it? Like, that's not a reasonable trade off in my brain. So no, I just, it's I wish really not. Yeah. Like, I just wish that more care and just research and just like trying to make it easier on women regardless of if it's like an abnormal reaction or not like I just I don't know it was a very frustrating moment and I just I, I think it's just like been something I've been noticing more when it comes to like just our health as women where it's kind of it I wouldn't say that I felt like she was like you know telling me that it wasn't happening but she wasn't taking it seriously. Yeah, it was you just know? like, well, this is how it goes. <laughs> yeah. See you next yeah. time. <laughs> yep. Yeah, see you next time. Um, It'll be gone in five years. And then I was just kind of like, oh, well, you know, like the spotting stuff sure is due to that. But I started having this like ovulation bleeding thing before I got it, like two months before. And she's like, well, periods change sometimes. But why? And I'm like, but why? I need a because reason I've, why. I'm like, I've had my period for over 12 years, and this is the first time it's ever been anything but normal. Would like to understand why. Mm -hmm. um, apparently, she didn't feel like wanting to understand why. So, um, yeah, I'll keep you updated. I probably will not hear from the gynecologist office for at least a month, um, but I will follow up with another update. All right, perfect. When it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, I'll, I'll throw in a really quick update um, with yes, my, please, my health please. here. So I know in my journey episode and in the unrealistic expectations, I had said that I was going to stay on the track knowing. Um, yep. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I yep. stuck it out for a good oh, – how many weeks? Between five or six I weeks, I think almost. It was over a month. It was sure. over a month. Yeah. And it just kind of like it wasn't – I wasn't sure if it was getting worse, but it was. And I was so uncomfortable. And I actually went on to this like tretinoin group on Reddit and mm -hmm. just kind of posted mm -hmm. some pictures of, of like the past few weeks. And I was just like, hey, can anyone help me? Like is this – is this normal? I feel like this is really aggressive. And like one person looked at me and she's just like, um, this is like a really bad, like, like yeah. we've all been bad, but like, this is really bad. Like your entire face is yeah. red and dry. It looks so painful. And like, especially if, if this is the worst you'd ever broken out in your life, she's just like, that's not normal. Like, and I'm just like, no. I have never broken out this bad in my entire life. Um, no. So I made the decision to stop. It's been about two weeks mm -hmm. and my skin is slowly getting better. Like That's um, good. still still dealing with like a little bit of dryness, but not like the dry, flaky redness that was mm -hmm. happening with the tretinoin. Um mm -hmm. so it's already improving so much in just two weeks. And yeah. I'm I'm a lot happier for it because I I mentally mentally couldn't cope with no with being on the tretinoin. And, and I'm not saying that I I you know I might try it again down the road maybe if I can get something more gentle. Um, mm -hmm. But to begin with, my skin barrier was already compromised. So mm -hmm. I think putting something on top of that, which is very aggressive on your skin it just like my skin couldn't cope so yeah yeah that's that's where i am yeah definitely your skin is just very was very sensitive before and that just makes like the barrier not really being 
in great shape mm-hmm. just feels like it just made it worse it totally did it totally did so yeah. that's where i'm at right now folks um just yeah. only taking my supplements and i'm just seeing like improvement every day now and kind of getting my skin barrier back which is amazing um mm-hmm. not to have like dry itchy red skin is, is awesome i yeah. like it makeup is still hard though makeup is still yeah. is not great to wear um mm-hmm. but you know one step at a time. I think I need to get a new foundation because I really don't like the one that I have right now. I think it's mm-hmm. kind of contributing to the problem. The breakouts? Um, no, not even mm-hmm. the breakouts, but like it just doesn't wear well on, what, okay, my, yeah, yeah, on yeah. what my skin type is currently, like just with the dryness. Um, mm-hmm. It's fine when I put it on in the morning, but then by like lunchtime, I'm kind of flaky. And mm-hmm. I, yeah, so I prefer days when I don't have to wear makeup, but you know, not every yeah. day is that day. So that's that's where I am right now. But Rachel, we are getting a little mm-hmm. bit further into this episode. So maybe yes, we should we move are. on to our actual topic, which I am super excited about. And I know you are as well. You mean you don't want to have a pity party? No, we're not having a pity party today. Okay. We're having great <laughs> we're having a great week. Um yes, no we pity are. party. Yes, no we are. pity party today. <laughs> no. That just we are not. Even when we even when we had a little brief one there. We're all like, we're moving forward. Yes. The sun has been shining. It's warm. Yes. I'm a happy camper. I feel like a sunflower. I actually woke up at 630 this morning and I didn't want to die because I was just like, the sun. The sunshine. It's here. Yes. It's here. So (laughs) We're solar powered. (laughs) We are. I honestly, the older I get, the more I'm like, we need to migrate like fully to the Southern Hemisphere during- the winter months but yeah because of the fact that we're just feeling so good about life and the sun and it's starting to get warm and stuff we wanted to do another travel episode yeah the travel episodes yeah. always go over really well because i know you guys love them um yeah so today we thought that we would just bring kind of a, a helpful episode yes. because so many people are getting ready to fly, drive, whatever mode of transportation mm-hmm. they are taking. And one thing that is common is things are getting very expensive. And yeah. when it comes to flying especially, I have noticed over the past like 10 years that it's it's not normal anymore for airlines to offer checked luggage for their flights anymore without an additional fee on top of your ticket yeah. price. So we kind of wanted to talk about how you can travel just as efficiently with only a carry-on. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. You guys are about to hear about um, how organized we are <laughs> because I like to think we're very organized. When we packed for our big trip in 2019, um, I'm pretty sure that we test packed those bags at least 10 times. Oh my gosh. To make yeah, sure everything fit art. perfectly. Yeah. It was an art. It was great. It was an art. So um, not to toot our own horn, but I think that we're very knowledgeable on this. Um, Sometimes, though, what's crazy is that there are airlines that will charge you for carry-ons now, too. Uh, Yes. Yes. I have a flight coming up in July, and I think we get one free Mm -hmm. carry-on, but we have to watch the weight. Or the – there's – yeah, like – if it's even a little bit old, like over, we're going to get charged. And I am just going to apologize now, guys. Um, there is a do or die playoff hockey game going right. on this evening and my boyfriend and his friends are upstairs. So you're going to hear a lot of cheering. So please just give me a little slack, okay? I don't think <laughs> I'll be able to control that, especially if things are going well. They're cheering for our podcast. Yes. Yes, they are. Yes. Um, but yes, the carry on weight. I think that's mostly with budget airlines though and like ones that are really just domestic because that happened to us when we were in Australia actually if you Mm -hmm. um, do not recall I think it was an easy jet that we were with um we were jet star jet star it was jet star Star. I get I know the easy jet is like in Europe and I got them confused in my head um we thought we were so sneaky with our carry-on backpacks well no no, I'm gonna I'm stopping you right there Rachel because we weren't even being sneaky we had already been on like eight flights with the same luggage oh yes and it was never a problem every airline took it as as carry-on yeah like it wasn't even a question 
remember um because the thing is is that i think we took uh a jet star flight from cans to the gold coast and it was just the gold coast where they did this Mm -hmm. and i just remember like we kind of like, we made it there and we were like, okay, this is all normal. This is good. And then they brought out the scale. Oh my God. And we were just like, <gasps> maybe we can like hide behind people. That's what I meant by being sneaky is we were like, no. 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 Okay. But this us. is how sneaky <laughs> they were. They, they were. They literally roll up this scale. It has a debit machine attached to it. So we already it know that wild. we're going to get fucked. We're, we're getting fucked no matter what. And they literally look at you and you're like, put your bags on here. And we're like, okay. And they, they're they like, your water bottles to everything. Like everything we were holding, we had to put on the scale. It was wild. And they go, they're like, that'll be $90, please. <laughs> and then you <laughs> ring your card. And then they, they grabbed our stuff, walked out the side exit door. We are literally boarding the plane. Like, you know, the, yeah. the little tunnel that you go on to get on the plane. We are literally standing there. They go out the side mm-hmm. exit door, down the steps, onto the tarmac, and they throw our stuff in the back of the plane. <laughs> Couldn't believe I'm it. pretty sure. Couldn't believe it. I'm pretty sure they went through that process before you're even allowed to like get your boarding pass scanned. Yeah. It was so funny. Oh my God. Uh, it was just an un- unexpected expense that yeah we were not ready for it like we were just a little grump we were like no <laughs> yeah like please no yeah like you because you you get through everything um you know security you're checked in all that kind of stuff you think that someone's gonna weigh your bag and say something before mm-hmm. you get right before getting on the plane <laughs> like yeah sorry that's yeah. normally how they do things but yeah that flight we kind of got screwed and had to spend an additional like almost a hundred bucks to have our bags checked. And I think off this note, Rachel, let's let's talk about some pros of traveling yes. with just a carry on because for sure one of them is definitely many airlines are now charging for checked luggage. And yep. another one at the airports is it's just faster. You know, like yes. you, when you get to your destination, you just want to either go home or get to your hotel or wherever you're going, and mm-hmm. you don't have to wait for the bag carousel to come through yes. which is always like at least an hour and you yeah. gotta sort through all the bags people are hanging all around you just want to go mm-hmm. where if you have a carry-on you literally get off the plane and you leave you know the other pro jumping off of this is knowing that your bag is going to end up at your location with you huge pro huge pro yeah. yes no lost luggage yeah, I have been hearing about that a lot lately. And the other thing is it just it's nice to have everything that you need on hand, especially when it comes to like your toiletries and stuff. Yes. Because usually like a lot of the time when these bags come in handy is when you are doing like a longer per se like backpacking trip mm-hmm. where you are kind of living out of your bag. And it's just nice to like, you know, have your hairbrush with you when the flight is like 10 hours. Yeah, especially for those longer flights. And and then I agree with you, just when you're on your trip in general, it's just so much easier to maneuver with a mm-hmm. single backpack versus like even a roller suitcase or like a bigger suitcase. It's just a hassle to get around, especially like in and out of cabs or checking in and out. It's just so much more weight to think about yeah definitely and it really helps you determine what it is you actually need yes yes you have to be very particular yeah because like uh I know we talked about it a few episodes ago but when I went away earlier this year I swear I like forgot how to pack and my bag I maybe wore two outfits out of the nine that I packed for myself so yeah having limited space really helps you be like ah maybe I don't need this dress that I might wear if I go to the opera. Exactly. And yes, you know, I've done carry on with longer trips, you know, with with us, we were gone for over six weeks. And I've done them for short trips as well. And really, Mm -hmm. it just takes like a little bit of planning before you go Mm -hmm. get some pieces that go well with each other. You know, then you have a bunch of different outfits, even though maybe you're only wearing like three pairs of pants or something Mm -hmm. it's just so easy to mix and match with different shirts and then really you have a full week's worth of outfits and then there's also Mm -hmm. less for you to wash as well you know for sure like for example when you and I went away we each had a skirt Mm -hmm. like a long flowy skirt we had those lululemon pants yep that we both love and are still in our wardrobe for like our airport days 
And we had some linen pants, I recall. Yep. And I think I had a pair of shorts. Did you bring shorts with you? Yeah, I think so. Like like literally okay. that was the base of all of our outfits. And then t-shirts are and tank tops yeah. are a lot easier to pack. So then we had just mm-hmm. um, a few different ones, a couple like loose long sleeve just to protect ourselves from the sun. And mm-hmm. we had countless outfits like – we did. You really didn't see us we wear the exact same thing week to week because we were just able to mix and match so easily. And mm-hmm. I kind of want to talk about, you were just kind of saying about the Lululemon pants. There was very, very yeah. important pants because one of the best things that you can do is dress yourself appropriately at the airport. Yes. Because for us, you know, we were going to very warm climates. This is different from when mm-hmm. if you're going to somewhere, it's a little colder. It's a little harder to do just to carry on. But we would wear our Lululemon pants. They were like the on-the-move pants, I think. Um, yep. Really great. Easy to wash. You know, you wash them in the sink, you hang them up, and they're dry really quickly. Mm-hmm. And we both had like our light bomber jackets that were kind of like our raincoats if needed. Yep. And I don't even know, like maybe a light sweater. You know, we we wore all of our big bulkier items on the flight with us and our sneakers mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. And then – That left so much room in our bags for other Mm -hmm. things that were just way lighter. So you really want to think about what you're wearing at the airport because I feel like a lot of people when they travel, they have like an airport outfit and they don't wear it at all for the rest of their trip Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. that is kind of your opportunity to layer up because I personally get really cold on flights and you can either like take a layer off, put one on. It's it's just nice and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So think ahead if you're going to be packing and and incorporate your outfits to your airport because you know yes airports are gross but you can just wash them when you get there you know it's no big deal yes yes we definitely did that i'm pretty sure that was like the second thing we did after sleeping exactly was go to wash those pants yes um all right so i think maybe let's jump into like kind of the toiletry sides and then we can go into organization of the actual bag itself so one thing that is also super important you know let's take makeup for instance but it can be like any type of product that you like using try to double up on those things so for instance i had this like little blush book that i brought with me that had a blush a highlighter and a bronzer Those are three things that I wear pretty frequently, but instead of having three separate containers Mm -hmm. for those things, I just had the one. And, you know, maybe it wasn't like my absolute favorite highlighter to use. It still did the job and it saved me a lot of space. And another one that I like too is when you are choosing a moisturizer, getting one that also has an SPF rating so that you can have sunscreen for your face. Yes. And moisturizer. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good one. And then my tip for toiletries would be so for makeup, I traveled with like I think a little concealer and mm-hmm. I actually took um a powdered foundation just yep. because we were going to places that were hot and humid and you know, my skin was more normal to oily. So I didn't mm-hmm. want to have to be wearing like a heavy foundation that was just going to melt. So I found like a pressed foundation. Just helped Mm -hmm. with like, you know, any shininess and the coverage. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that I did do is I actually got my lashes um, lifted and tinted before Mm -hmm. going. So I didn't even actually pack mascara. Mm -hmm. And especially if you're going to places where you're going to be swimming a lot, you don't want to be wearing mascara unless it's waterproof because it's just going to run. So I highly recommend, you know, spend that little bit of extra money to get your lashes done if that is a concern of yours, because Mm -hmm. it just takes so much effort and a lot of space out of your bag. And then another thing, you know, if you can, um, depending on how long you're going for, you can put your normal cleansers and moisturizers and any other products that you use into smaller containers. You know, it's very easy to find the travel containers. And then- I kind of traveled with the knowledge that like, okay, I might use this up, but this is a very common product Mm -hmm. that I can get anywhere. So that was just kind of easier, like not stressing about having to take a giant bottle of Mm -hmm. shampoo and conditioner. You know, it's just like, it's shampoo and conditioner. Like pretty sure every country has it. Yeah. Um, So just know like you can buy things over there. The one thing though that is expensive especially if you are going to like Thailand 
And even mm-hmm. Australia was and New Zealand were expensive is sunscreen. So I did keep my my high end sunscreen and I did actually mm-hmm. end up using all of it by the time we were done our trip. Mm-hmm. And I have a feeling there was like at the very end we needed to get some. I think we did because we were like going back and forth. Yeah, we like, were like think... sharing the last little bits of our sunscreen. It yeah. just wasn't going to be enough. And like we burned so easily that we really did mm-hmm. need sunscreen. <laughs> and it was expensive. It was like $20 for just like a small yeah. bottle. So, you know, think about your skin that way. As mm-hmm. cool as we want to be to pack like all of our makeup and perfume and all that kind of stuff. like protect your skin all right like take the necessities for sure and speaking of necessities just remember that there are certain things that hostels and hotels depending on where you're staying even airbnbs will most likely provide Mm -hmm. you know you don't really necessarily need to fuss about bringing a travel size version of body wash because pretty much everywhere you go is going to have that yeah or like a bar of soap right like doesn't contribute to the liquid so it's it's perfect to travel with yeah like if you didn't have room just remember that and another thing just for organization when you get to the airport because I know you're gonna touch on packing cubes in a bit Laura but one good thing because with the airport and our bottle of liquids we always have to take it out it has to be no little clear plastic bag and stuff mm-hmm. if you are bringing like a toiletries case, just package up all of those liquids before you get there in a little clear plastic bag. So you just really have to like either just put it on the top or when you like open up the bag, zip open your toiletry case and just pull it out. Yes. So that you don't have to worry about it when you're in the line or even in the airport. Yeah. So that is such a good tip because I believe the bag is one liter, correct? Yes. Yes. So I highly suggest that you get your own one liter bag because – I had all of my stuff put in the cube and it was like I I made sure everything was under and I was good, but I did not have it in a plastic bag. And the airport provided me with one and they said, you need to get all of that in here. And the bag isn't that big. It's a good thing I'm good at Tetris because like I had it crammed in and barely closed um, just because I had some oddly shaped bottles and that was my own fault. Like I I made sure everything was under the limit, but like I could have put things in a better shaped bottle Mm -hmm. and yeah, it was a little little dicey there and it did hold us up a bit at security. So I highly recommend you just do that before and definitely have that on top of your bags because Mm -hmm. that is what you are going to have to pull out to show them and it's just easier if you don't have to unpack your entire bag to grab your toiletries yes would you like to discuss packing cubes yes my favorite you love i love you love those packing packing cubes cubes. yes you were so organized oh my gosh yes i love it actually i'm going to start with the bag that i I brought I I honestly mm-hmm. bought it off Amazon. I think it cost me around 100 bucks and like seems expensive for a backpack, but really you you can go cheap. I was actually probably more on the cheaper end cuz a lot of times these mm-hmm. backpacking bags can cost hundreds of dollars and mm-hmm. I got mine off Amazon. It's a Kelty Women's Red Wing 40 liter. I love that bag. It is so great. It had so many pockets and what it, my favorite feature was it had straps on the side that could compress the bag down. <sighs> Um, we were so good at that. Yes. Oh my gosh. We had it down to an <laughs> art where like we just one of us would sit on the bag, we'd crank all the straps yeah. and we'd make these bags so small. So we would mm-hmm. never be questioned about whether or not they were um, appropriate for carry on. And mm-hmm. that bag really was fantastic. So highly recommend if you are looking for a good backpack, that's not going to break the bank. That's the Kelty mm-hmm. Women's Red Wing 40 liter. Uh, mm-hmm. Rachel, I know you got your bag kind of fitted for you, um, correct? Yeah. Because you were actually – like you used that bag on a previous trip mm-hmm. before. Yeah, yeah. So my I kind of took it on um, my trip that I've talked about before to, to the UK. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like uh, – that, that trip was definitely like hiking oriented. Um, so I did get a bit of a bigger – bag I think you had a 50 liter didn't you I I think it was a 50 or 60 and it really was like a like I got it from mech which I don't know if it's in the states but if you're at least in Ontario you'll probably know what store that is and um yeah let me tell you I'm pretty sure that bag was taller than me sometimes um but it was good because it was kind I think it was maybe like I don't like one head bigger than the one that you had 
Yeah. Um, but it was also smaller on the sides. Like I noticed like yours had a bit more space like width wise mm -hmm. where mine was like long. Yeah. You had the long and skinny where I had more like the, the stubby yeah. bag. And um, I, I remember yours was like the, the largest you'd want to have for, for carry on. You definitely don't want to yeah. go over that 60 liter just because then it, it starts getting out of the dimensions that airlines will mm -hmm. accept so both of our bags were fantastic and what made them fantastic though was definitely what was inside and that was the packing cubes mm -hmm. again amazon i think i spent less than 30 dollars for three packing cubes and they were the heinz eagle travel compression cubes and they came in three sizes so i kind of had like a large one a medium and a small uh the mm -hmm. small one i used for my toiletries and mm -hmm. that made everything so easy, especially with when we were in hostels. You know, I had everything neatly inside. And if we were going to the bathroom, you know, you just grab the whole bag. It had a little handle on it. So it was exactly like having just a, a makeup bag. You know, it mm -hmm. made things so easy. And um, the bags themselves, they, they zip down so they can flatten mm -hmm. as well. And like they just fit perfectly inside yep. my bag. And then with the medium bag, that's where I had like bathing suits, underwear, bras, like my hairbrush and deodorant and like soap. So like anything mm -hmm. that didn't qualify for the liquids, I took it out of the toiletry bag and put it in the medium size bag. Again, flattened mm -hmm. to nothing. And then the big one was like my actual clothes. So like skirts and the pants, t-shirts, anything else that I was wearing. And um, Rachel, you kind of said it at the beginning of the episode, but the secret is to roll your clothes yeah. um, very tightly and you can mm -hmm. get so much in there and then you zip it down with the compression cubes and mm -hmm. you would be amazed at what you can fit in these cubes and your bags. And then for footwear, um, we wore our kind of walking shoes. They were little sneakers. And then mm -hmm. we also brought like a pair of Toms and mm -hmm. sandals and they all just fit perfectly in there. And then mm -hmm. we also had room for a towel and we didn't bring big towels. We brought like these special bamboo towels that dried really quickly and mm -hmm. they were still like a full size towel, but not like just, they weren't giant. They just folded yeah. down really nice and, and packed very nicely in our bags. One towel that is really great to look into if you can find it are the Turkish towels. Mm -hmm. They are literally like a shawl. So they dry very fast and they fold down to nothing. Plus you could double it up as a cover if you need it. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend that as well. Definitely. And just a little note as well in one of those little zip up compartments, bring some locks, people. Oh, with yes. You for yeah. the hostels, because majority of the ones that we stayed in, I recall, I'm pretty sure all of them did. Maybe one didn't. They do usually give you a locker, but either you, they don't give you a free lock. So no. you would have to rent it. So just bring little locks with you. That is little an padlocks. excellent point. They're great. Excellent point. Yes. And one thing that I just want to jump back into is hair. Hair is very important to us. Yes. Um, yeah. We obviously did not bring a hair dryer because the majority of hostels that we stayed at, I think, had one. And also, you know, we were in like sea salt air. So we really just embraced the the curly hair and bought the- We were looking spectacular. Yes. We bought the, the Bumble and Bubble air dry cream. And yep. that just kind of helped our hair dry, but not get like too frizzy. So highly mm -hmm. recommend if you're going to bring a hair product, bring something where it helps your hair dry. Yes. Oh, dry shampoo as well. And yes. Not, oh my god. I didn't we bring bought a lot of dry shampoo. Yeah. And <laughs> and I don't. I know I didn't. I didn't bring the aerosol one because you got to be watch. Got to careful with the aerosols on planes. Mm -hmm. um, baby powder or just a powdered yeah. dry shampoo works mm -hmm. fantastic. I love it more than the the aerosol stuff. Yeah, I did pack the aerosol, um, like the mini like Batiste one. Mm -hmm. It lasted me three days. Yeah, like um, <laughs> I think I used it twice and it was empty and. There yeah. I had my cheap little bottle of baby powder and I think we both yeah. used it for our whole trip mm -hmm. and it was only like half gone. So for yeah. like $2, great investment. <laughs> and our hair was looking fabulous. So with the bags, you know, we did mention how we packed them up probably like 15 times uh, to figure out how to make it all work and if anything needed to be removed. And this is very important is weigh your bag before you get to the airport to make sure that it aligns with the carry-on weight 
because that's really the last thing you want is when you get there to be like, oh, that doesn't work. But also like if it is a trip where, you know, maybe you do just because this happened to me where you do uh, wind up checking a bag, check the weight guidelines depending on the actual plane you're going on Mm -hmm. because if the plane is bigger, there's a bigger weight allotment. But maybe when you're coming back, you're on a smaller plane and then suddenly you are like a kilogram over and they won't let you take it on the plane. True. And you have to reorganize your bags. So it's very important. Yeah, especially yes. if you had – like we also had small backpacks with us as well that kind yeah. of doubled as, as purses. Um, mm-hmm. You know, but if we had to check our bags, you know, before we had them take them, you know, we had to pull things out of the big bag, put it in the little bags mm-hmm. we'd have for the flight. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you don't want to be unpacking your bag in the middle of an airport. Like it's it's not fun. It's not no. fun. It's not. And um, actually, thank you for bringing up those little bags. When you do get like kind of – it would be, I guess, like kind of your day pack. Just try to like make sure even though it likely will not be in there very often, just like kind of roll it up and be like, will it fit in this bag if I need it to? True. Like if you're carrying it around. So I know like we both had pretty flexible little bags that if we had to, we could like roll it up and stick it in. But, you know, like the backpacks with like hardback, those are a bit more difficult. So – Just something to consider. Yeah. And let's stay on those small backpacks for a moment here because uh, Mm -hmm. they really did double up as our little day pack. They were a purse. They were a beach bag. I, for one, on the the plane had like my iPad in there, which I had used as an e-reader. You know, I kept all the the flight tickets, the itineraries, everything in this bag. Mm -hmm. So definitely want to plan accordingly. And then even on the flight. So after we had kind of gotten through security and everything, I think on on a few of the, the longer haul flights, I actually did pull my toiletry bag from the big mm-hmm. bag and put it in my backpack. And mm-hmm. then when my larger bag was up in up on top in the overhead cabin, I didn't have to go in there and pull it down, especially when you're on a flight for 17 hours. Mm-hmm. It's a lot easier just to have like your face wipes and your moisturizer in your small bag that's just under the seat in front of you. Mm-hmm. So definitely think also how you're going to pack that bag because you need a functional for traveling and then also when you're at your destination. For sure. And also uh, for the flight, have just a giant water bottle. Yes. I think we all know that. But oh my God, that was a lifesaver. I'm pretty sure half the time we had two. Yeah, absolutely. And unfortunately, we did have to buy these bottles. Um, We did. It was was like $10 for a water bottle. (laughs) Um, But what you can also do, and we just, I don't know why we didn't end up buying this, but um, you can get collapsible water bottles, Mm -hmm. uh, which we probably Mm -hmm. should have done, but but we didn't. (laughs) Yeah. Next time. Next time we, we will. did a lot of planning. We did a lot of planning. Yeah. That was just one thing we didn't think of. Exactly. Okay. Um, Lessons so learned. Also on Amazon or Mac or wherever, you can um, definitely get those collapsible water bottles and then just fill them up at a, a water fountain in the airport. You'll save yourself a lot of money. Yes. Yes. And another thing too to consider is just if you are going somewhere out of country, currency conversion at the airport can be a bit more expensive. Um, So just for planning for that, either get it before you get to the airport or just decide on like a set amount that you'll kind of need um, before you get there. You know, like to pay for the taxi when to your hostel or hotel, just so that you're not like, I need to get the money that I'm going to need for this entire trip at the airport because it's just not the most affordable option for that. So just get enough to get you by for the first couple days. Yes, exactly. I know every country we went to, Thailand especially, we did deal more Mm -hmm. in cash. But with Australia and New Zealand, I definitely relied more on my credit card. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. It was just way easier and, you know, you didn't have to deal with withdrawing cash and then getting exchanged and Mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So we do live in a good age now where it is possible just to travel with the money that you have. Um, And one thing that we used a lot was actually Uber because it's it's global. Instead of getting a taxi to our hostels from the airports, we would just get an Uber. And then Rachel, I know like that was just hooked right up to your account so we didn't even have to worry about carrying cash around yes for sure and then I guess the last point and you know this might be uh we may have said this already like five thousand times but I feel like it's important to be said because it happened to us and it can happen to everybody make sure if you need a visa for the location that you're going to to have it in place it was accidental that we didn't have 
our visitors' visas when we were going to Australia, but that was still the most terrifying hour of our life. Yes, it was. It really yeah. was. And uh, with that, you know, we had our phones. Yeah. To to do that kind of stuff, and I've I've never been one to travel with a lot of electronics. I did enjoy having my iPad with me though. It was older, so I was just like, okay, if it breaks on there, like it sucks, but it's fine. Like it's mm-hmm. super old. It just doubled up as a great e-reader instead of like carrying a bunch of books around. I just had that and then we did ha- like watch the occasional movie on mm-hmm. there as well. So it was perfect, you know, and that was another thing I kept in the small backpack because you do have to pull it out at the airport. And uh yeah, that was just a nice little thing to have. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes, I agree. I mean, I think they have like Wi-Fi on planes now, which is just baffling to me. But um, for long haul fights and stuff, just remember to download your songs on your playlist beforehand because otherwise it's sad. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure everything is downloaded first, just in case, you know, just in case, just a lot of planes have Wi-Fi, but like, you know, maybe it doesn't work that well. Who knows? Yeah. Or they have Wi-Fi and you have to pay for it, which, you know, is just another expense. And we are all about traveling on a budget here. Yes, definitely. So any other tips? I think that's everything for me. That is everything for me as well. We hope you guys I found this helpful for any trips that you have coming up. I know we kind of geared this around traveling on a plane, but I think these tips are very applicable even if you're doing a road trip or traveling Mm -hmm. on like transit, you know, a train Mm -hmm. or or a bus. Like you don't have a lot of room to move around there as well. So it really helps Mm -hmm. to be efficient and smart with your packing. And definitely like we've said before, it was trial and error before we left. You know, we packed and repacked those bags so many times until we were very comfortable and knew exactly where everything was. And we just had absolutely no delays when we were trying Mm -hmm. to get through everything at the airport security. Precisely. And if you guys are going anywhere exciting this summer or this year, please let us know where you're going. Yes, so we can live vicariously through you. (laughs) Yeah, I really would love to live vicariously through you guys. Um, Thank you. Um, That's my request. (laughs) Please. please and you can do that by leaving us a five-star review on apple Podcasts. nice segue nice segue thank you thank you thank you i i brought it back i brought it back uh and also a five-star rating on spotify we very much appreciate it yes and we also have our email which is t with laura rachel at gmail.com if you ever want to strike up a conversation that's where you'll find us there you go and with that live like tea live like tea